there is no good education without new knowledge. And the, and the knowledge comes from research, in either from basic research or from applied research. And this is particularly the case of graduate education, the master and PhD level. I agree with uh, Ivanka Popovic uh, this morning that we should give the uh, basic fundamentals to at the bachelor degree. However, I see many good examples when we are getting, even at that level, uh, bachelor students involved in the research. And then, for instance, at the University of Washington, we are doing type of, uh, sponsored by Boeing, by the way, competition, to have project with three different disciplines focusing on current problems. So boosting the uh, imagination and uh, encouraging to, to work together. So uh, since advances of uh, digital transformation, we're talking about uh, industrial revolution for zero, uh, the creation of knowledge has been so much accelerated that it, it, we got that type of cognitive gap, you know, we cannot absorb as much as we are getting. So the innovation should help us uh, to uh, pick up, absorb the most important uh, knowledge to education process, starting from ICT technologies through artificial uh, 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 intelligence and uh, augmented uh, uh, real, virtual reality, to a uh, symbiotic uh, uh, autonomous system. I would like to talk uh, briefly. I mean, my colleague uh, Rodolfo was talking uh, today. A bit. There is a feedback also from education. We need to, on the research, we need to keep, you know, in mind that the quality of education, quality of innovation, and the quantity depends on how we teach. So this is why I am a big fan and those who used to work with me of uh, person-centered education in building of, of learning community. Okay. So I expect that we'll have excellent uh, panel and excellent discussion, even if we are from different disciplines, to look for some conclusions which will help us to apply smoothly the best results of the research and inspire our students with new knowledge. Preparing myself for this uh, uh, session, I was inspired by two events. One uh, happened on uh, October 14, when the Royal Academy of Science Nobel Committee announced uh, the award in uh, economics. First time received young, uh, relatively young uh, economist, and also in the area of uh, experimental uh, research on uh, uh, focusing on elevating global uh, poverty. Uh, Abji, uh, Abjit uh, Banad Jerry, uh, Esther uh, from India originally, Esther from Daflo from France, both from uh, MIT and uh, uh, Michael Kramer from Harvard. What was interesting that th this is uh, an innovative uh, example of applied research. They use transdisciplinary uh, evaluation methods, uh, including Med medical sciences, pharma uh, pharmacology, and uh, they found uh, a most effective way to uh, enhance human capital uh, to fight with poverty. What was very interesting uh, in, in the statement of the Nobel Committee that during the application of 20 years of this method, they helped about 400 million people. So, what is interesting, and uh, this is what we discussed today about all these barriers, obstacles, those guys were brave enough to cross trans 
disciplinary discipline. They capitalize on several schools of economics, institutional, behavioral, contract economics, including neoclassical <laughs> economics. So, and then uh, they serve now uh, in academia and uh, teaching next generation. So this is a big hope. And then the second event happened in my hometown, Lublin, eastern part of Poland, where uh, on October 20th here were uh, French, prominent French uh, biophysicist, biochemist, and biologist Pierre <laughs> Uh, Giulio uh, received a honorary uh, doctorate from Maria Curie Skłodowska. By the way, he is the grandson of Maria Curie Skłodowska. He stated in his acceptance speech that the race for uh, higher competitiveness and profitability, profitability in short terms, which is the base for a contemporary society, leads to serious limiting of researchers' creativity and their innovativeness. Such policy, which is responsive for serious, I mean, profitability, I mean, paradoxically is counterproductive to its goal, to the mission of academia, I could add. He also emphasized that research is a form of artistic activity which relies on creativity combined with high level of technical proficiency, competency. And finally, he said, the effective research system based on sustainable interactive between two types of research, basic and applied, will grant, uh, 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 the, uh, you know, is very uh, critical and depends to large extent to design such evaluation process that will grant sufficient space for young researchers with their freedom and creativity. So again, the research comes to education, how we shape in education process new researchers, whether they are open-minded, they are risk takers, and so on. Okay, so how to get uh, access to new knowledge? You know, you are teaching uh, uh, particular graduate courses. Well, first of all, you need to mobilize your own faculty to do research and share the research and get students involved in, in the research, particularly at the master and PhD level. In fact, you know, we in the in US, we, we, the most the research is done by our master and PhD students. Uh, encourage uh, faculty members and students to take uh, advantage for uh, mocks. I guess <laughs> it was mentioned many times, I don't need to explain this. I mean, particularly from the top university, I mean, Stanford started 2012 with Coursera, Harvard with edX and other, MIT with open courseware. We have now over 700 universities offering over 10,000 courses. I didn't check all 10,000, but I am sure that those from the top universities are worth it to learn. And then having the access to them, you can skip repeating these texts and focus what comes out from your own research. Because this is the best inspiration for students when they are coming fresh results from your research. And then, applying artificial intelligence to faculty uh, and students, self-learning, self-examination, and teamwork. You can do a lot of with our AI in terms of time scheduling and so on and so on. And finally, uh, emerging innovation, symbiotic education with digital twin. This is something what uh, inspired me at the conference organized by uh, Rodolfo Florini in, in Milano, this uh, uh, two professors, uh, Canadian uh, Kinsner and Italian Sarako presented the model. Okay, time to finish, okay. Good, so let me summarize this. Uh, to help to cope with the doubling knowledge, very often now, every 20, 
30 years. We expect that within 10 years, maybe they will be doubling within ye one year or 18 months. So we could use the symbiotic digital twin. Uh, complementary uh, digital relations between individuals and digital twins. You know what is digital twin? We have already uh, applications in, for machines, but also we don't know how look our digital twins uh, possessed by intelligence agencies, marketing agencies. We already have digital twins. We need to be aware. But if we would be able to uh, apply in education, we can speed up the process to focus on personalized needs instead of going through all this. So this is a great opportunity and, uh, and uh, challenges, including uh, correcting unethical behavior. I mean, it could be from intelligence company, uh, already practicing uh, uh, digital twin. And barriers and threats. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's difficult to find uh, faculty teaching, uh, doing research. We need to find good incentives. Uh, we need to uh, also build uh, confidence in our partners, and uh, private companies, public companies, and in which we want to do uh, research and help them. And then, we need to be aware, uh, we, I heard not enough, I believe, to, to mention that then we are facing a gray, uh, growing wave of nationalist xenophobia and intolerance. And then led to the changes in national curricular reforms in some countries. Unfortunately, it's happening to, to my country uh, when you see the, in the... Uh, recommended framework curricula for the first, third grade, that the main goal of education is teaching patriotism. And for the classes from the four to, to six, the main goal is to increase national identity. What type of citizens we, we will educate? A lot of history, a lot of old stuff, and instead of openness. So, this way, I see that this type of changes in the curricula, I am sure that it, the, the, the politics and ideology interferes with the curricula in many countries, but it helps just to reproduce uh, own conservative uh, electorate, particularly in the case of Poland in rural areas. Thanks God we have dynamic growth of uh, private and non-public uh, uh, schools which follow the universal human values, you know, uh, in their curricula with uh, person-centered uh, approaches. So anyway, uh, what it, does it lead? We are going to have in public school people less educated who does not know who was Leonardo da Vinci or Napoleon or don't know anything about French Revolution and then we will have the elites educated in the private non-public school. So these are the serious problems I would like to share with you, and then we're looking how we can avoid them.